What's happening, everybody? Jay Shockblast here, and check it out. We have the Star Wars The Clone Wars character pack uh, for LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. And shout outs to Pack Attack for letting me know uh, that this is finally available um, because TT Games didn't seem to want to. So maybe I missed it. I don't know. But in any event, here we are. And. Uh, the final two character packs have been released. Uh, we are still owed two level packs, which wouldn't be shocked if they just said we ain't doing that, but that's another story for another day. Um, so here we go. We have two of the most popular female characters in the Star Wars universe, uh, both of which have very unique introductions. Uh, Asajj Ventress is right here. She was in both versions of the Clone Wars, uh, both the animated series and the, the CGI series. Um, you know, very, very famous for that. Uh, she's got a very unique look uh, with her shaved head. Um, and she's also got her curved Dooku lightsabers, uh, dual wielding, which is uh, not, not as, uh, not as unique as it used to be when she came out as a dual wielder, um, but it is something that she does. I wish she kind of did something else uh, when she got bored, but uh, you know, I'm just thankful that we actually finally have her. So, uh, unfortunately, she just sits there and sasses you. Um, the next is Aura Singh, uh, who very famously uh, the the actress. I mean, I don't even actually know if she was an actress. I think it's like. Um, the Phantom Menace was like the first and only movie she was ever in, but George Lucas uh, famously told um, this woman, who I think was a model at the time, that he was going to make her famous in three seconds, and boy oh boy did he do that. Aura Singh has become one of the most popular bounty hunters in the galaxy and in the Star Wars universe. Um, and I think they did a good job with her here. She kind of stands at attention, but looking to the side. Uh, she's very fierce, which I kind of wish Asajj Ventress did, something a little bit like that. I mean, they're essentially pretty similar characters. They're both very white skin. I think they're kind of like maybe even the same race. I don't know for sure. Um, but she's got her hair coming out the top peg. Uh, it looks very much like Asa um, I'm sorry, Aura Singh. Uh, Aura Singh appears in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace for a very brief moment uh, during the uh, pod racing scene. Um, she's just kind of hanging out um, in the crowd, I want to say. It was, she was either on top of like a mountain or like looking down on it, or she was like in the crowd looking down on it. Um, but it was kind of, uh, you know, very, very momentary. Like it was a very brief moment. And... Um, Man, fans took it and ran with it. They started wanting to have her backstory. They started, you know, like coming up with their own theories uh, to the point where Lucas went ahead and, you know, put her in some other things, including the Clone Wars. Uh, so there you go. Aura Singh is another member. Now I'm going to skip to the end of the pack uh, just because it's going to be easier in the long run. That's Darth Maul. This is his brother, Savage Opress, and look at this dude. Boom, they both got that dual wielding lightsaber business, and uh, obviously they're brothers, so they look very similar. And uh, there you go. Um, so Savage Opress obviously um, was like a, a Dooku project, if you will. Um, much more of a, a brute than his brother. Um, his, his brother is a little bit more uh, cunning, uh, or at least he was portrayed that way. So, um, but, you know, still, very, very popular character uh, because of, of the fact that he is the brother of uh, Darth Maul, uh, who I feel is very popular. I love the way that he just kind of stands there, like, very sure of himself. He's got the, uh, got the crossed arms going, he's just very sure of himself. Uh, so there you go, Savage Opress. Very cool character. I think a lot of people are going to be excited for him. Uh, so next up we have Barris Ophi. And uh, Barris Ophi is the Padawan of Luminara Unduli, who may or may not be the same race. No, I don't know if they're the same race, but they, yeah, they actually, I think they are. Uh, I don't remember what that race is, but. Um, this is the Padawan and the Master. Uh, she is also uh, the very good friend of 
another character that I think everybody's going to be fired up for, and that is this one right here, Ahsoka Tano. Uh, look at how I tease you there, but I'll get to her in the Rebel Pack DLC. Um, let's go back to Luminara here. Uh, so, uh, Barris Ophi, of course, uh, she has been in both the Cartoon Network version of... Uh, the Clone Wars, and she was in uh, the the CGI version. Uh, when I think they were both on Cartoon Network, if I remember correctly. But um, there there was an original cartoon that was like animated that inspired the actual CGI Clone Wars, and uh, she was featured in both of them. They were both really great. Um, I have uh, the first one on D uh, DVD. So uh, anyway, there she is, Barris Ophi. Um, I kind of haven't been. I usually like to show you what they all do. I know I kind of skipped that. So she has agility objects, force powers, Lego walls. Aura Singh was grapple, agility, and Lego walls. And Asajj Ventress is dark side force, agility objects, and Lego walls. And then, of course, we have um, Savage Opress, who is dark side forces, agility objects, and Lego walls. Uh, let's go out of order again. And we are going to go to Hondo. Ona uh, Hano Onaka, and we're also going to skip over to Cad Bane. I do want to talk about first uh, Hondo Onaka. Um, so this is a character obviously that came up in the Clone Wars. He has also popped up in um, Rebels uh, towards the end of last season, which I haven't caught up on. I only watched the last episode, um, so I have to catch up on everything in between. But uh, there you go, Hondo Onaka. Uh, he's a pirate. He's got his staff. Um, he can do um, the staff socket. Uh, he can also do Lego targets, and he can do bounty hunter missions. Um, he, his staff actually does um, let him do stuff like that, so that's pretty cool. And then he's got his very cool uh, pistol. Um, so over here we have Cad Bane, and let me just tell you something, partner. Cad Bane is one of my favorite characters in all of the Clone Wars. The Clone Wars is, is kind of like my favorite episode, era of Star Wars, to be honest with you. Um, that time, up until Episode 3, there's so many Jedi and there's so many you know, things going on. So many great characters like Grievous and, you know, all, you know, and of course Cad Bane. Uh, Cad Bane is inspired by Clint Eastwood. He's got that Old West cowboy feel to him. He's got the cowboy hat. Um, I would love to see a shoot-off between him and uh, Han Solo. I have a feeling that it would uh, end in a stalemate because neither one of them would shoot first. Cool guys don't look at explosions and neither does Cad Bane. Boom. I love doing that. So a very cinematic look. Um, he's got the thermal detonator so he can blow up some silver stuff. Um, he's got a nice smirk to him as well uh, when you're not using him. Um, he can do bounty hunter missions and Lego targets. So um, when I end up redoing uh, my top 10 list um, after hopefully the last two level packs are out, uh, Cad Bane is definitely going to be in my top 10. I, I don't know how high yet, but he's probably going to be up there very high. I love Cad Bane. I, I really think he's a cool character. Um, very ruthless, you know, he did some things in the Clone Wars that that really just, you know, made me such a huge fan, so. Uh, so there you go, man, there is Cad Bane, partner. And uh, the last two members of the Clone Wars pack uh, are some fan favorite clone troopers. Uh, but they're not just troopers, they are Commander and Captain. Uh, here we have Commander Cody. Uh, Commander Cody is very famously uh, the trooper that communicated uh, with Emperor Palpatine uh, with Darth Sidious in executing Order 66. Um, so that, that is the famous scene of him uh, looking at his uh, little trans... There it is right there. Just got told to execute Order 66. That's fantastic. Oh man, that is, that is really awesome that they did that. Um, so I love it. Um, gets bored. He doesn't say anything though, but yeah, that's epic. Um, Cody was the uh, the clone commander for Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, you know, it's always it's a very sad scene after he gets that execute the order. Uh, literally after Kenobi walks away. Um, 
you know, he uh, shoots down his longtime master. And that's the great thing about the Clone Wars, is that it really establishes the bond between Cody and Obi Wan in a way the movie just couldn't do, um, because you know they didn't have the time to do it, and they fleshed it out over so many seasons. So uh, there you go, Commander Cody, and last but not least, uh, we have Captain Rex, the leader of the 501st. Uh, quite possibly one of the most popular um, stormtroopers, probably the most popular stormtrooper ever. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Um, you know, although the, the new uh, Rogue One storm death trooper is becoming pretty popular. Now I'm doing this to get into place so you can see all the, the little etches that he has for, I'm assuming, shiny kills. Um, or clanker kills, I should say. So there you go. Uh, Captain Rex, of course, commander of the 501st. Vader's Fist, a.k.a. Uh, Anakin Skywalker's uh, personal troops. And uh, he's also been in Rebels as an older gentleman. And uh, I'm interested to see where that goes from here. Um, so yeah, man, there you go. The Clone Wars uh, character pack. It's looking pretty good. Um, finally out now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll do some individual videos for some of the characters soon, and we'll see ya.